Protecting the Coral Reefs You've probably seen videos of the beautiful coral reefs that cover the ocean floor. The biggest coral reefs are located where the water is warm, but there are also reefs in colder waters. These reefs are very important for the diversity of the oceans, as they provide a home for thousands of underwater species – species that could not possibly survive anywhere else than in these old coral reefs. However, we have a problem. The coral reefs are super stressed out. And how do we know this? Well, when stressed out, the coral reefs lose their colorfulness and become plain white – dead white. But before looking at what causes the stress, let's take a closer look at what corals actually are. The cool thing about corals is that they are simultaneously plant, animal, and mineral. In fact, a coral is a society that consists of several polyps. The coral animal forms a skeleton for itself from calcium carbonate, the same mineral used to build the Taj Mahal and that is found in chalk. The surface of the calcium carbonate is home to microscopically small fungi called zooxanthellae, aka zooks. The zooks feed the coral animals through photosynthesis, just like plants on Earth. So when corals stress out, the zooks from their surface die, which then leads to the coral itself to hunger. It's a vicious cycle. So what causes corals to stress out? There are five key factors the rise in water temperature, the acidification of oceans, the eutrophication of oceans, water pollution, and fishing. Let's look at these five factors in closer detail. 1. Rise in temperature In the years 2014 to 2017, practically all the corals in the world were stressed out at least once due to heat. During times of stress, some corals die, but fortunately, some of them recover from the stress once the water temperatures decrease. The older corals don't recover as easily as the young ones. 2. Acidity of water When carbon dioxide dissolves in water, carbonic acid is formed. Carbonic acid is a weak acid, but in large enough concentrations, it can affect even the acidity of oceans. Due to acidification, all the animals that build a calcium shell are in danger. These animals need carbonate ions to build a strong shell, but the acidification of oceans leads to a decrease in the concentration of carbonate ions in seawater. Acidic water also causes carbonate ions to dissolve off the surface of these animals, causing the shells to weaken. The change in acidity can also affect the metabolism of these animals. For instance, in acidic conditions, the animals may not be able to absorb enough iron and nitrogen. Number 3. Eutrophication Eutrophication causes a balance shift in the species living in a certain area. Fast-growing plankton grow faster than corals. The increase in plankton causes the waters to get murkier, which results in plants getting less sunlight, reducing the amount of photosynthesis. Also, as the plankton decompose dead algae, the amount of bacteria increases. These bacteria use up oxygen, causing the oxygen concentration of the water to decrease to levels where some animals can no longer survive. 4. Pollution Corals are also stressed out by water pollution. Pollution is caused by ships, as well as chemicals that dissolve from garbage. Pollution also causes the water to become murky once again challenging the ecosystem of the oceans. 5. Fishing Currently, too much fishing takes place in the oceans. The fishing net harms the corals, and in addition, the balance between species is changed, affecting corals. The oceans are large ecosystems, with their own chemical processes and climate. Changes in these processes and climates has caused species to stress out. These changes are most notable in tropical waters and the coral reefs, where the amount of endangered species is the largest. Some species are able to adapt to these changes, while a large proportion may become extinct. If nothing is done, during the next few decades, the coral reefs will be destroyed completely. These will also have a big effect on humans. Half a billion people are directly reliable on the food and livelihood of the coral reefs. The worth of these waters is calculated to be tens of billions of dollars a year. Therefore, global agreements to reduce fishing, chemicalization, littering, and climate change are urgently needed. 
Better practice is also needed in land use and agriculture, as they currently increase eutrophication. So what can you do to help save the corals? 1. Understand how shells react to acidic water. Your science teacher can instruct you on how to conduct an experiment on this. 2. Recycle your garbage, but you already knew this. 3. Let the corals be. Don't buy or collect them as souvenirs and avoid swimming, fishing, and boating in areas where they grow. 4. Reduce your environmental impact. Examine how you and your community can reduce the chemicalization of waters and your carbon footprint. Finally, continue to educate yourself on the issue and help make others aware of this problem.